Joining me now to discuss Dory Gold, a former foreign policy advisor to the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, as well as a former ambassador to the United Nations. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for your time. It's great to be with you. It's great to be here in Jerusalem. Thank you very much. Look at the scene. Yes, yeah, so we heard from, we heard a little bit from John Kerry there, but talking about the Prime Minister, he, uh, it's been described to me, his speech today, as a warm-up act. He's going in to speak to Congress. There's been a lot of tension, even if the Prime Minister keeps saying that my speech is not intended to show any disrespect to President Obama. I know that they say they deeply regret it. They want to departisan the issue. Is the damage th done, though, Mr. Ambassador? You know, I've been in this business for a long time, and I can tell you this. Uh, we've had differences before. Mm -hmm. I remember Yitzhak Shamir, our Prime Minister in the early 90s with George H.W. Bush mm -hmm. uh, and the tensions in the relationship with the Secretary of State, uh, Secretary of State Baker. And, you know, Saddam invades Kuwait and the U.S. and Israel have to work together and solve the problem and find out how to develop a joint strategy. We are in a similar situation today. We have tensions. They're clear. But you know what? What the Prime Minister said is the most important thing. What? The issue is the deal. It's not the invitation. It's not protocol. And a lot of the reporting, you know, Israel and the U.S. have an echo chamber. You're sitting in the U.S., you read an Israeli newspaper on the web. You take that information, you develop a whole theory. And maybe the material is wrong, but it all becomes so intense. And let's get back to the essence. The essence is the deal. And the essence is preventing Iran from getting nuclear weapons. But a recent poll right here in Israel showed that the Israeli people are split on the issue. Uh, that has become an issue, unfortunately, the issue of the speech. Straight down the middle, 38 to 38, 24 percent having no position on it. So the Israeli people themselves don't know if it's a good idea for, uh, some of them don't know if it's a good idea that the prime minister is over there. Is it the prime minister, is he part of the problem in politicizing this? Uh, no, I don't think so. How I think, can he not be? Well, because he didn't go there because the speech is going to win him an election. Everybody knows that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is one of the most articulate speakers of the English language. You don't need this speech in Congress to prove that to the Israeli people. But he's in a very close race. A lot of Israelis I've been speaking with think that this is more about his re-election than it is about the threat of Iran. Well, that, that's, that's the, the chatter that you hear from time to time. But the truth is, because the P5 plus 1 are likely to try and conclude an agreement, by the end of this month, he has to get his points across right now. And when you're talking about the destiny of Israel, the future security of Israel, when you're talking about Iran that has a missile called the Shahab 3, which can hit Israel, which, according to the International Atomic Energy Agency, they're planning to remove its conventional warheads and put in a spherical nuclear device. That's what it says in the, in the reports. And finally, they parade this missile in the heart of Tehran every year with signs on it, Israel must be destroyed or Israel must be wiped off the map. If you're the Prime Minister of Israel, you have to make certain that Iran doesn't get nuclear weapons. And you have to be really certain, not perhaps we'll see. Samantha Power just today said Iran, the United States will not let Iran have a nuclear weapon, period. Now, I believe you, Samantha Power. She's an extraordinary individual. Then why she does the Prime Minister not seem to believe uh, Well, listen, dig up the material on North Korea or Pakistan. It's very hard when you're getting to the last stretch of developing a nuclear weapon, when you're coming around third base, if I can use the baseball analogy, to detect what the Iranians are exactly doing. When they're in the phase of uranium enrichment, a lot of people know what they're doing. You have visits of the International Atomic Energy Agency. When they're actually assembling the weapon, many people, including your former Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates, said there's a real problem when they are on the verge, because you may not know when they cross over and obtain the weapon. Mr. Ambassador, do you think a speech tomorrow before the U.S. Congress can change anything involved in these negotiations that have been going on in Geneva? Do you realistically think a speech from Benjamin Netanyahu tomorrow can, can tip that needle? Well, you know, I'll tell you something. I have studied these speeches for many years. Of course. And um, going back even before I was born, there was a man by the name of Winston Churchill who saw that the Soviet Union was moving through Central Europe. And the West wasn't really responding. And right after 45, into 46, came to Fulton, Missouri, and he talked about an iron curtain descending on the uh, in center of Europe, from Scandinavia down to the Mediterranean. His speech changed history. I'm not saying this is going to be the same exact thing, but speeches matter, because we are open democracies. Will the US, he succeed? 
I believe he has a very strong chance of succeeding. His speech will contain substance. It's not just rhetoric. It'll be substance that no one has heard before. It'll be material that few in Congress are aware about. And he'll put it on the table. And in our political system in Israel, we'll discuss it. And in the U.S. political system, you'll discuss it. And by the way, the idea that an Israeli prime minister come to the U.S. to discuss such an important issue is not odd. You know, you've had no, this is the third time he'll be speaking before Congress. No, but you have had differences with allies right. on missile defense, on the war in Iraq, oh. and there are open discussions between Germany and the U.S., between Britain and the U.S. This and is now with Israel and the U.S., and we have to tell the truth. We do it from the perspective of respect and of wanting our alliance to work. And it's unfortunate that it has entered into politics. Who's at fault, though? That goes into the discussion and the debate surrounding the controversy of this speech. But we will be, we will be watching tomorrow for exactly what the Prime Minister says and then discussing afterwards what impact it has. Mr. Look Ambassador. for substance. Don't look for politics. The substance is there. Thank you for your time. It's great to see you. Sure. Thank you so much.